if you think that gym memberships, spa treatments and pamper sessions are thoroughly modern concepts, then think again, because a Roman was definitely indulging in them first. In fact, Roman attitudes to health, fitness and wellness aren't all that different from today's. They were just less reliant on protein shakes. Romans exercised, socialised and shopped just like you. Well, as long as you like shopping for tunics and amulets. But where did they go? Well, they went to the baths, but not as you know it. As we'll find out today, whether you were filthy rich or dirt poor, the baths were about so much more than your daily dip. I'm Ben Shires, and I'm about to take a deep dive with the experts at English Heritage to learn more about how Roman baths ran. I'm here at Roxeter Roman City, a site cared for by English Heritage, and I'm joined by one of their properties historians, Andrew Roberts. Andrew, great to see you. Hi. And what a site to begin with. It's very evocative, isn't it? Yeah, hugely evocative. It's one of our, our most special Roman sites. The remains here uh, really kind of speak to what life would have been like in Roman Britain. Now, um, I'm no expert, but I'm guessing it didn't always look like this. So can you set the scene for us about what Roxeter was really about? So if we were standing here about uh, 1800 years ago, we would have been standing right at the centre of the city of Roxeter, as the Romans knew it, Viriconium, and we'd be surrounded by its most important and impressive uh, buildings. The city was founded in about AD 90, about 50 or so years into the, the Roman conquest and occupation of, of Britain. And it's really in its heyday by about the second and third centuries. And what you see today when you visit Rockster is only its, it's very centre basically, but the city once stretched out across what is today fields and the, the surrounding landscape would have been covered in shops and houses um, and, and really it would have been a really thriving place, one of the wealthiest cities in Roman Britain. And here where we're standing, we'd be in the middle of the public bathhouse and this is a, a complex that takes up an entire city block and consists of a large basilica, a hall, um, a market, a food market, some shops and a grand bathing suite as well. So Andrew, these incredible sort of excavated remains we can see behind us are what is left of the bathhouse complex and I think for a modern audience Romans and bathing go hand in slippery hand. It seems to be synonymous with Romans. They love their bath time but was it a scrub in a tub or did it have more significance? What was the link between Romans and bathing? Well the Romans bathed together in rooms that were heated to specific temperatures and yes they did have bathtubs but they were kind of larger sort of communal baths and it wasn't just a quick scrub it was a far more involved process. So they've really thought about this then this isn't mm. just come in and have a bath mm. this is come in and have all these different sensory experiences as, as we would mm -hmm. phrase them now I'm sure mm -hmm. Romans weren't mm. sold it in that regard they understood how the, the human body would, would respond to those, those different conditions. Well, certainly, indeed, at a place like Roxeter, where they had this large bathing suite, you'd have different kinds of heat. So you'd have a sort of a wet, steamier heat, and you'd have a drier heat, almost like a, a modern day sauna. And then if that wasn't enough for you, you could also maybe get a massage, um, and the Romans didn't like to have body hair, so you'd also have your hair plucked at the bathhouse as well. Wow, I mean, that's a, that's a full-on body MOT, mm. isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. It's easy to sort of draw those modern comparisons, isn't it? Because mm. there's so much about this bathing complex, this, uh, this sort of vast site dedicated mm. to, to something that, that we still do today. And it wasn't just bathing taking part in this complex. What else could people do? Well, there's a large basilica 
uh, just outside of the bathing suite. And this is a really multifunctional space which could accommodate hundreds of people. And we think this would have been the perfect location for specialists to ply their trade. So we think that in the Basilica, you would have had maybe uh, doctors, witches, hairdressers, and uh, makeup artists. So they're kind of taking care of your needs that aren't taken care for in the bath itself. So there's all sorts of ways to spend money here. Presumably then, the more money you had, the better or more lavish an experience you would get. Would that be fair? I think that would be fair, but it's still pretty nice and luxurious, even if you didn't have a lot of money to spend. You probably find that the rich would bathe more often and they probably take longer because they had more free time. Andrew, this complex seems to be centered around health and well-being. Did the Romans have a concept of wellness as we would know it today? Not as we would know it today. I don't think they would have really identified with that, that concept. But if you think about what went on at the public bathhouse and you think about wellness as being, say, having healthy habits that improve your physical and your mental well-being and really ensure that you thrive in your life, that's definitely what's going on here. The, the Roman orator Cicero once wrote that bathing is one of the necessities for life and health. And we have plenty of accounts of Romans coming out of the bath and just really feeling, feeling great about themselves and having life's cares, worries, life's pains just disappear. And this bathhouse remains at the center of Roxeter life for over 250 years. And what it really shows is how much the residents valued spending time in nice surroundings, in good company, and investing time and effort in taking care of themselves. And that's as important in the modern world as it was in the ancient one. Sounds great. Can I get a membership still or? Yeah, you need to join English Heritage first though. Oh yeah. That was a fascinating chat with Andrew about how magnificent Roxeter was in its heyday, as well as the important role that wellness played in Roman daily life. Well, I'm now off to catch up with Cameron Moffat, who is English Heritage's collections curator for the West Midlands, to see the types of objects that have been dug up on Roman sites like Roxeter and what these discoveries can tell us about Roman wellness. Cameron, hi. Hi. I am very excited to chat to you and also find out of all about this amazing collection that you have in front of you. Yes, we have a, a huge collection from Roxeter and we have many objects that, that relate to bathing because it was, it was an activity that required lots of accessories. Um, so uh, uh, many of the things I have in front of me are replicas uh, and, and I'm going to use them to give you a really good idea of what you needed to take to the baths. This is something called a strigil. And uh, as the Romans did not have bath soap, uh, what you did to get the dirt off your body, away from your skin, was first of all, you, uh, you, you did some exercise to, to work up a sweat and open your pores. And then you would rub some oil into your skin, or otherwise you would get someone to rub the oil in for you, possibly a bath slave. Uh, and then uh, you would scrape it off with the strigil and the strigil took the oil which had lifted the dirt off your skin took all of it away and then the final stage was that you would have uh, someone would pour a cold bucket of water over you basically we also have the the other side of, of roman beliefs the mystical and then yes. the, the magical side yes their understanding and belief was that um, illness was almost invariably the result of being cursed um, and that curse would, as often as not, have come from the evil eye. And so one of the best and most sensible things that you could do to keep yourself healthy was to avoid being cursed. And you avoided being cursed by protecting yourself with magic. And so I have a couple of genuine uh, Roman amulets here, which are types of magic with which you would protect yourself. Um, and so one of these is, uh, you can tell me what that is. I think I had this removed last week, actually. It was causing me some <laughs> problems at the back. Well, this, this is a tooth, isn't it? It is. Of what animal, I'm not sure. I'd hazard a guess at maybe, oh, a bear or something like a that. A dog, I think it's a dog too. Wow. So how did this then provide protection against a curse? Well, you can see that, that it has been 
it's been perforated, there's a hole in it, so that uh, it could hang around your neck from a cord. And uh, the Romans believed that you could use like to treat like. And so a tooth would be very effective to treat diseases relating to teeth or conditions relating to teeth. You could wear that and, and believe and hope that it would give you some relief. And presumably protection from a dog bite as well. That feels oh, like it could point. be. Yeah. yeah, maybe, maybe. Uh, yeah. And what about this then? You say this is also a protection this, device. This is also a protective amulet. These are something you get a lot of at Roxeter. And here you have an, a representation of an eye which can be used to attract and then deflect the curse of the evil eye. They were probably very popular with um, the large slave population because these were essentially free. And talk to me also about this object because I'm intrigued, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm going to be absorbed in your answer, which I imagine <laughs> is, is part of its purpose. Uh, I'm dreading to think what this was for. Right, so the Romans bring uh, latrines and, and proper built toilets mm. to Britain and, and to much of the empire. But there were things that they didn't quite get right. So uh, here, here at Roxeter, we have a public latrine and everybody is sitting over an open channel. In the center of your public latrine, there would have been a tank of water and just one of these for everyone to use to, to clean themselves after they had used the toilet. And so you would go and you'd dunk it in the water and clean it up a bit. But of course you could never really get it all that clean. What came before loo roll? Right, I mean, it's obviously appalling, but <laughs> also it just feels so insubstantial. I, I thought it would be at least a big sponge, but, but that thing, it's, it's just a, a dabber, if anything. Uh, Cameron, I can see that some of the objects have come together in, in a little sort of kit bag arrangement. So is, is this what your average Roman would have been bringing into the baths? If they could afford this, yes. Yeah, but yes, it, it, it was. All your tools for the bath are here together. The, the oil, the strigil, and the little set with the nail cleaner, and the tweezers, and a little scoop for various purposes. <laughs> a multi-purpose scoop. It, it's incredible. I, I love to see these things because some of them, like the tweezers, almost are, are exactly what we'd use today. Yeah. Uh, the strigil, the sponge on a stick, less so. D depending on lifestyle, definitely <laughs> less so. Um, but it, they were obviously living a life of, of relative luxury and enjoyment and sort of physical fulfillment. Oh yeah, bathing was huge. Bathing was w one of the top perks of, of the Roman Empire. Yep. And we are in Perk Central right here. I think we are. <laughs> It may have gotten a bit drafty over the past 2,000 years, but in its heyday, Roman Roxeter really was the height of luxury. And when it comes to hygiene and wellness, we share a lot more in common with the Romans than we might initially think, from plucking out pesky hairs with tweezers to maintaining a regular skincare regime. The Romans really did scrub up well. In fact, come to think of it, I reckon I'd have made a pretty good Roman myself. Now, if you'll excuse me, I mustache. I've got a meeting to get to and I haven't even started running my bath yet. 